blood pressure is one of the best measures, underrated, but best measures of how well our cardiovascular health is. So if you can lower your blood pressure and you can lower your baseline heart rate, then it, it's super good measures for how well some kind of activity is actually helping your health. There's enormous, enormous amount of physiological benefits from from that your research has shown alongside improve, improved uh, glucose metabolism, insulin sensitivity, lowering blood pressure, lowering heart rate. Could you talk about some of the most exciting areas of, of physiological ad adaptation that your research has seen? I'm thinking specifically for people watching this who maybe the thought of, of doing any cold water immersion horrifies me. Could you give the top line of what the, the biggest benefits are that people could expect? I think that the biggest benefits people can expect is um, I think actually in time when people have done cold water immersion will be a, a lower blood pressure. And I know it sounds boring because blood pressure, like well, blood pressure, I can take more blood pressure, but that's a good thing because you can actually follow your own journey in this. So blood pressure has been shown before my research also, to have um, to be lowered after cold water uh, swimming for uh, three to six months. And I think that is uh, showing just how much an impact this has on your cardiovascular system. So this kind of short-term uh, stressing up to stress down, as I say, uh, is a way of lowering inflammation. And when you lower that plaque and inflammation and that get, you get rid of that in your bloodstream, then you will um, have more um, easier passage for the blood to uh, run to the heart and from the heart and also a better contraction and dilation of your blood vessels. And that is going to lower your um, blood pressure. Blood pressure is one of the best measures, underrated, but best measures of how well our cardiovascular health is. So if you can lower your blood pressure and you can lower your baseline heart rate, then it, it's super good measures for how well some kind of activity is actually helping your health. And that has been shown with cold water swimming, cold water immersions. There are some of the physiological long-term benefits, but there's obviously uh, a lot of short-term benefits as well. I was hoping you could speak about some of the benefits that someone can expect within the next 24, 48 hours following cold water immersion, and then maybe get into some of the biological differences between the sexes. Do, do women respond differently to men, for instance? I'm trying to work out some of the nuance around these treatments rather than kind of grouping the benefits in one catch-all term. Mm. So, yes, they are. there are some... There are some acute, you can say, benefits of doing cold water immersions, and we can we could, yeah, explore that on multiple levels. But if we just go into the go into the cells, let's just see what happens in the cells acutely when you expose yourself to the cold. So you have this um, physiological response of the cells trying to protect itself from 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 dying or from yeah. So uh, the acute stress is increasing a, a hermetic stress response in the cells where it protects itself by increasing heat shock proteins and enzymes that are gonna be repaired. Proteins are being repaired in the cells, so it protects the cells. There are like three stages uh, of the cell where it um, where it's acutely activated. And in phase two, it will respond as, a, as if it's protecting itself. So it builds itself stronger um, and that is the um, ooh, stress, the, the healthy kind of stress, you can say. Um, but if you expose yourself too long to any kind of stress, so that will go, this, the cells will go into a phase three where it will be exhausted and it would age faster instead of in phase two where it will actually um, live longer. So that is why I try to teach people that short term cold exposure is the healthy kind of exposure that you need for a healthy way of using cold water immersion. And if you then become too macho and you sit too long because you want to compete in this, then you will probably imagine that the, the cells will be overexposed in phase three where you age them faster, but you won't see that as an acute response. You won't get, get up from your 10 minutes ice bath and think, oh, I think I exhaust my cells. <laughs> they are in phase three. You cannot say that, but maybe we will see this in later studies down the line where we have followed people for maybe 20 years and see what kind of exposure this is um, and how detrimental it can be. And I think that this is important to get this out. We do have studies in some 
other form of like in the other extreme end is heat exposure. What we see in these long cohort studies from Finland showing that if you do heat exposure as in sauna too long, you will also see that the benefits decrease and even the risk of cardiovascular diseases will increase again. So there is like a sweet spot or a window where things get really healthy for you. So that is why I'm trying to, to teach people that the acute effects are the healthy kind of short-term micro stress of the body. So that was the, that was the acute effects in the cells. <laughs> and how, how confident are you in the research that the current guidelines are going to be applicable in five, 10, 20 years time? Obviously science is a moving target. It's constantly changing, yeah. but are you fairly confident now based on the understanding of, of, of cold water therapies that the recommendations are right? We're, we're in that sweet spot. We're not going too far past it. I, I mean, as a scientist, I am always open to learn new things. So what I'm hoping is that new science will emerge from also from my science. I hope this will just open new doors for more science, more exploration, so we can get more certain about exactly how long, what is the higher threshold? We don't really know what is the higher threshold for cold water immersion. But we, what we do know is from science already back in published in Nature magazine in 1936 that there is a stress response and if you have too much stress you will exhaust the body that is just like you also expose your body to toxic things like alcohol for example so maybe if you take a little bit of alcohol you drink a little bit of alcohol that might be good for you because that will make your strong your cells stronger in the body because it protects itself and then you'll be hardened but if you drink too much, we definitely have studies today showing the long-term effects. And we kind of like need those studies as well in cold water immersion. 